Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and with me today is the Surface 604 Shred. This is an affordable electric mountain bike that uses smart component choices and the simple torque sensor to take a hub motor and make it more capable for off-road environments and even more capable on single track trail. So we're going to put this bike to the test today to see how it performs in the real world, so stick with us. When Surface 604 set out to build the Shred, they did so with a couple of very key goals in mind. The first of which is they wanted to make a thoroughbred electric mountain bike. They wanted something that would be capable in off-road situations and specifically capable on single track trail. They also wanted the bike to look good. They wanted it to first look like an electric mountain bike, and they also wanted it to still be accessible to really anyone who wanted to ride it. So they made some very key geometry decisions. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, they wanted to make sure they kept the cost of the bike down. There's really not a lot of options out there for electric mountain bikes that cost less than $4,000. And what I mean by that is electric mountain bikes that are actually capable in tight single track terrain. This bike with an MSRP of less than $3,000 really is one of the most inexpensive electric mountain bikes and capable electric mountain bikes I've ridden to date. And they did that by one, choosing to use a hub motor over the mo more common mid-drive motor setups. There's a lot of reasons why electric mountain bikes more commonly come with mid-drive motors. We'll dive into those a little bit more in detail later. But by using the hub drive motor, they kept costs down, but they made it more responsive and a little bit more useful in off-road applications by adding a torque sensor to it. This makes the bike incredibly responsive to a rider's pedaling. It stops immediately when you stop pedaling, it kicks on immediately when you start pedaling, and it makes that power a little bit more harnessable in off-road applications, which is really, really important for the actual use of this bike. They also made some very smart componentry de decisions. One, they gave this bike a nine-speed Shimano Alivio drivetrain. If you look on the Surface 604 website, it says this bike's gonna come with a SRAM X5 drivetrain. SRAM and Shimano are direct competitors. The X5 group set and the Alivio group set are also direct competitors that are directly comparable. So in my mind, that substitution is a little bit of a parallel swap. One's not better than the other. It really just depends on which brand you like better. You also get some really good Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, a suspension fork up front, and then some really, really aggressive CST tires that hook up in dirt very, very well. Now, there are a couple of upgrades on our review model of the Surface 604 Shred that are very much worth pointing out. The first is that suspension fork. The fork on this bike is from Ren. It's an inverted suspension fork, and it is an absolutely an upgrade that you should consider if you think that you're gonna ride this bike on, tra on trail more often than you're gonna ride it on, say, pavement or even dirt roads. That Ren fork stiffens up the front end. It's got really, really wonderful bump dampening ability, and it's also just gonna last a little bit longer than the RST fork that comes stock on this bike. We also have a larger upgraded battery. This is a 960 watt hour battery. It's absolutely honking on that frame. It gives this bike a really phenomenal range. And that battery is powering the bike's 500 watt rear hub motor. Lastly, as far as the upgrades go at least, we've got an NCX suspension seat post. This is another thing that was added on for us in the review process. There's a lot of reasons why you'd want to choose these upgrades. We're going to dive into them in a little bit more detail later, but let's get to the testing and see how this bike has performed in the real world. The Surface 604 Shred comes stock with a set of Tektro HD E350 hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. This is a really solid name brand braking setup that we know actually really, really well. These specific Tektro disc brakes, the HD E350 brakes, are disc brakes that we see on a ton of e-bikes that we review. They have electronic motor cutoffs, so when you touch the brakes, the motor immediately cuts off, which is super duper useful for these hub-style motors. 
but they also just perform very, very well time and time again. And then on top of that, they're super serviceable. So if something goes wrong, which they occasionally do with hydraulic disc brakes, your average bike shop, your local bike shop is gonna be able to service them, which is a really, really important factor to consider when you're thinking about the disc brakes on your e-bike. But to get an idea of how well these brakes mesh with this specific electric mountain bike style e-bike, we're gonna put them to the test in our braking test where we bring the bike up to 20 miles an hour and slam on the brakes as hard as we can five times to get an average stopping distance. So let's see how the whole package performs. Tektro HD E350 hydraulic disc brakes that come stock on the Surface 604 shred performed really nicely in our braking test, coming to a stop on average in 11 feet and 3 inches, which is several, several feet shy of our current average of just below 16 feet. That's all the bikes we've put through our braking test thus far. That is a really, really solid result from this bike. So you should have a lot of faith that these dual piston brakes are going to do very, very well in almost any situation you put them in. As we mentioned in the beginning of this review, this specific bike has a number of upgrades that Surface 604 has done to it. And one of the largest is this battery. It is a 960 watt hour battery or a 48 volt 20 amp hour unit, which is absolutely huge. That is a massive amount of energy stored in the frame. And it's much larger than the 48 volt 14 amp hour or 672 watt hour battery you'd get if this bike were in the stock format. Now to get an idea of just how much energy we could squeeze out of that battery, we put it through two separate range tests where we rode the bike until it died. The first was in PAS1 and the second was in PAS5. Now in that PAS1 test, we rode the bike for 62.41 miles before it finally died. And then in the PAS5 test, it went for 44.25 miles. Those are humongous ranges, just whopping ranges. And there's a couple of things I'd like to note about that. The first is that in that PAS1 test, we actually don't do our low power range tests always in PAS1. Our kind of MO here at Electric Bike Report is we do our low power range tests in the first pedal assist level where the bike actually feels like an e-bike. The fact that this one still felt like an e-bike in PAS1 is really notable. It means that Surface 604 has done a really nice job of tuning those different PAS levels. The second, thing that I will point out is just how long those ranges are. Even the PAS5 range of more than 44 miles is just utterly remarkable. And because of that, I would honestly suggest considering getting the smaller battery. I know that is gonna be a hot take for a lot of people because range is one of the biggest things that you always think about when you're buying an e-bike, but that smaller battery is gonna do a number of things for you, especially if you're considering riding the bike more in off-road settings. The biggest thing it's going to do for you is it's just gonna keep the weight down. 672 watt hours is still a ton of energy. It's gonna do really, really well for this 500 watt rear hub motor. And you just don't need that much. Your average mountain bike ride is gonna be far less than 44 miles. So that smaller battery might actually suit you really, really nicely. Where I would consider this really big 960 watt hour battery is if you're looking to use the bike as a more versatile e-bike. Think about like if you're gonna do a lot of bike path rides, if you're gonna commute on it, but you still want something to ride on the trails on the weekend. Maybe you just don't wanna plug it in or don't ever wanna worry about the battery range then that 960 watt hour battery is gonna do really, really nicely for you. But if you're just thinking purely of riding on single track trail, I would really consider that smaller battery. It's not only gonna keep the weight down, it's gonna save you a little bit of money, but all in, super impressive range result from the Surface 604. Really, really well done. Considering the Surface 604 shred is designed to be an electric mountain bike, it really is notable the fact that they chose to use a hub motor on this bike as opposed to the more common mid-drive motor. Surface 604 chose the hub motor, one, because it's what they knew. They've got an entire lineup of hub-driven electric bikes, so it really makes sense that they chose to just kind of stick with what they know when designing a nice electric mountain bike. 
But what makes this hub motor really, really applicable in an off-road environment is the fact that it's paired with a torque sensor as opposed to the less sensitive cadence or speed sensors. This torque sensor measures the amount of force that you're actually applying at the pedals and applies motor power in kind with that. So let's say you're on a single track trail and you're trying to get up a rock step. This motor is going to be able to measure and tell the difference between normal pedaling and when you really step on the cranks to get the front wheel in the air and power up and over that step. Or on the other end of the spectrum, it's going to be really responsive when you're diving into a corner and you begin to coast. As soon as you stop pedaling, the motor is going to cut off power and you're going to be able to shed speed just like as if you're on a mid-drive or traditional mountain bike. Now this motor works, it does a good job, but there are some things to note about it that you're gonna see that's different from the mid-drive electric mountain bikes. And really these are the reasons why mid-drive motors are more common. The first is gonna be weight distribution. You, by having that mid-drive motor in the back end of the bike in the center of the rear wheel, you're actually shifting your center of gravity further back. Mid-drive motors, they're mounted in the bottom bracket, they're in the center of the bike, they're very low, they give the bike a low center of gravity, and it gives the bike a more neutral handling characteristic. Now this mid-drive motor in the rear is not a huge issue, it's not something you notice all the time, but if you ever get the bike in the air, if you ever really try and lay the bike over in a corner, or you're trying to get into a situation where you need to pick your rear end up with your feet, that's when you're gonna notice it, when you actually kind of notice that increased weight in the back end and the fact that your center of gravity shifted just a little bit back. And while that, or excuse me, the torque sensor does a really good job of engaging the motor, it's not quite as good as the mid-drive motors, but it's gonna be much more affordable. There's a reason, this is, this is one of the components that Surface 604 strategically chose to help keep this bike on the affordable end of the spectrum. Mid-drive motors are very, very expensive. They take a lot of engineering, especially the ones that are on the more expensive e-mountain bikes. This was a really smart choice to do for a bike that needs to be less than $3,000. It is amazing how few less than $3,000 electric mountain bikes that are on the market. So the fact that Surface 604 took a shot at designing a good one is really, really impressive and they did a really nice job with it. Lastly, you get five different pedal assist levels to choose from when you're talking about the motor power on this bike. We put these to the test on our circuit test to see how they perform in each pedal assist level. And the bike has a really nice distribution of power between each of the five. It really allows the rider to adjust how much F or excuse me, how much power you're getting from the motor at any given time and how much effort you're having to put in through the cranks. The front fork on this bike is one of the specific components on this review model that's been upgraded over the stock edition of the bike. This version of the bike has a Ren suspension fork on it, whereas the stock model of the bike comes with an SR Centaur XCM fork. That XCM fork is very good and it actually is slightly better than many of the forks we see on affordable electric mountain bikes. But when it comes to dedicated off-road trail riding, this Ren fork really is bar none. It is absolutely a worthy upgrade to make, especially if you truly want to use this as an electric mountain bike. If you're looking to save a little bit of money and you're thinking about using it as a little bit more of an, a, a versatile model, maybe you're gonna ride it on bike paths or dirt roads and do less dedicated trail riding, that SR Suntour fork is gonna do fine. But if you want a trail rig, get the Ren fork. And there's a couple of reasons why I would suggest you do that. The first is durability. The Ren fork is going to be able to withstand prolonged and repeated bumps, just big heavy hits over and over and over again. And you're gonna be able to have a lot of faith that you're not gonna damage the fork by doing that. Whereas the more affordable SR Centaur fork is not quite built to, the, to withstand the same repeated hits as that Ren fork is. This is just gonna be a little bit more long lasting. It also is going to help stiffen up the front end. It makes the bike handle a little bit more like a surgeon's scalpel. It's gonna help with cornerings and then even changing directions in rougher terrain. And then finally, it's just a nicer feeling fork. You get into any sort of rougher terrain, and if you were gonna be riding the SR Sun Tour fork and this Ren fork back to back, you're gonna notice that the Ren's just a little bit more plush, a little bit more forgiving, and just better in rougher terrain. This bike is a very nice handling e-bike. 
it handles corners very well, it handles rough terrain very well. It's overall just really, really nice riding. But it also is still set up to be versatile if you don't want to use it as a dedicated trail bike. It's got a little bit of a longer head tube that puts you in a little bit more of an upright riding position. This is going to make the bike more friendly for older riders or those who just don't want to be in a more bent over athletic riding position. And while this is a dedicated electric mountain bike, Surface 604 is not ignorant to the fact that people might want to use it for a little bit more versatile tasks. They gave it bosses and mounts for rear rack and fenders. So if you want to use it as a grocery getter or ride it in the rain, you're also going to be able to do that. It's a very versatile, very capable, and very nice handling e-bike. So to get an idea of how the Surface 604 Shred, and more specifically its 500 watt rear hub mo motor, perform uphill, we're going to put the bike to the test on our test hill hell hole. Now hell hole is a third of a mile long, it's a 12% gradient on average, it's where we put all of our review bikes to the test. And it's plenty long and plenty steep to just really push these things as far as they can go. And specifically, it's steep enough to push 500 watt rear hub motors really up to their limits. We have lots of 500 watt rear hub motor bikes not actually clear it, at least in our throttle only portion of the test. This bike does have a throttle on it, so we're gonna do that test as well. But I have a lot of faith that the Surface 604 Shred is going to clear our hill. One, it's an electric mountain bike. It should be able to clear a hill that steep. And two, this is the torquiest motor that Surface 604 specs on any of its bikes. So out of any Surface 604 bike, and we've had a lot of success with these in the past, this one should do just fine. All right. So this is the throttle only test of the Surface 604 Shred. So this is the torquiest of motors, so I do feel like her torquiest motor that Surface 604 uses. So it should do fine on this hill. Hello. So far it's doing great. Not a lot of evidence at all that it's gonna have issues on this. Only down to eight miles an hour. It's actually climb in super well on just the throttle. Through the longest, steepest section, we're gonna regain some speed here into one more steep section that sometimes causes bikes to fail. But I really, I got a lot of faith in this one. Hello. Yeah, no issues whatsoever. And now just cruising to the top. Not even a peep of indication that this motor is having much issue at all. Didn't even really slow down all that much in the steep sections. Really impressive for a 500 watt rear hub motor. Now we are on to the PAS5 test of the Surface 604 Shred. And based on how easily it made it up this hill on throttle, I've got quite a lot of faith this thing's gonna do well. You can definitely feel that torque sensor. It is really relying, or paying attention to, I should say, how much effort I'm putting in with my legs. And it's going up the hill pretty quick. Be on your left.
The Surface 604 Shred didn't just do well on our Test Hill hellhole, it did extremely well. In the throttle only portion of the test, it cleared the top in one minutes and 27 seconds with an average speed of 12.5 miles an hour. And then in the PAS5 portion of the test, it made it to the top in one minute, seven seconds with an average speed of 16.2 miles an hour. This is a really, really good result when compared to all of the other bikes that we've put to the test on Hellhole. But we've actually reviewed the old model of the Shred as well and put that bike to the test on Hellhole so we can look back in time and see if this new model is better than the old. And it absolutely is. In just the throttle portion only of the test, which is really the true test of the motor's power because you're not getting any help from the rider's legs, this bike bested its old time by more than 30 seconds, which is a considerable amount of time on a hill that's only a third of a mile long. And then in PS5, we also saw an improvement of several seconds over a time that was already very, very quick. But there's another reason why those results are even more impressive, and that is because I did them. And the old bike was reviewed by a previous reviewer at Electric Bike Report who is 10 to 20 pounds lighter than I am. So not only did this bike go faster than the old model, it went faster while carrying 10 to 20 pounds more weight, which is huge. That is really, really, really impressive. It shows that this motor is going to be very, very capable for the steep off-road hills you're going to encounter on single track trails. And it just shows it's improved, which is great. It's awesome. It's a really, really nice handling and climbing e-bike. So I've spent the last 20 years riding and racing mountain bikes. This is definitely my wheelhouse. And it's one thing that when we get a bike that calls itself an electric mountain bike, I really look at those bikes with a very healthy dose of skepticism especially when they're on the more affordable end of the spectrum, and especially when they're doing things that are a little more unconventional, like choosing something like a hub motor over a mid-drive motor, the more normal setup that we see on electric mountain bikes. But the Surface 604 Shred definitely backs up its claims of being an electric mountain bike. This bike handles off-road riding, single track trail, and generally rougher and more extreme terrain far better than I ever would have expected it to. And there's a couple of reasons why it does that. One, Surface 604 set out with the very specific goal of making an electric mountain bike. They didn't do anything wasteful like putting fenders or a rear rack or really any other accoutrements on this bike. They just wanted it to be a slim, sleek, trail riding machine. And they did a good job in doing that. It's got good handling, good geometry. It's a very friendly and forgiving e-bike. They also made the incredibly important decision of using a torque sensor. Hub motors with a cadence sensor really are not super useful on trail. There are too many tight situations, and if you try and throttle one of these hub motor e-bikes on a tight trail, you're generally overwhelmed by the motor power. You want something that's gonna be a little bit more precise, responsive, and very much in tune with what your body is asking it to do. And that torque sensor on this bike, paired with a 500 watt rear hub motor, and I do think it's important that they chose 500 over 750 watts, those things added together make this bike a very responsive, very nimble feeling, and refreshingly capable hub-driven electric mountain bike. I also really love the price. My biggest complaint about the electric mountain bike category right now is that you kind of have to have a lot of cash in order to get something that truly is an electric mountain bike. In my opinion, your very bottom level of mid-drive, nice, capable electric mountain bikes is right around $4,000. So the fact that Surface 604 came in, tweaked a few things, and did something a little bit unconventional, and pulled it off and made a bike that costs less than $3,000 MSRP that can actually do a lot of the trail riding that you could do on a more expensive e-mountain bike, it's super impressive, and I really applaud them for trying to target those folks that don't want to spend an arm and a leg but still want to get out onto the trails. It's where I love being. It's where I think a lot of our viewers would really love being, so I'm super happy to see something that makes this space a little bit more accessible. I really enjoyed riding the Shred. I really loved testing all of the different upgrades that Surface 604 sent with it. I really 
Just to hammer it home, cannot more highly recommend that Ren fork. And I really just can't more highly recommend the Surface 604 Shred if you're looking for a more affordable electric mountain bike option. If you've liked this bike and you've liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe to Electric Bike Report's channel. And if you want to know more about the bike and see a little bit more in detail the data we collected on it during testing, be sure to click the link in the description below the video for more in-depth written review. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.